One of the things we really like about Photoshop and After Effects is how they work together to create a trackable 3D shot out of a standard 2D photograph. And this is kind of handy because if you've got a half decent phone like a Galaxy S2 that can take an egg, egg, egg megapixel still or better still a DSLR like a 550 or a 5D, um, you can take these nice shots like just standard one here down the side of a couple of houses and then you can track down them as if they're a 3D object and you get that nice parallax feeling. The only thing to consider is that wherever you want to track to, like supposing we want to track down to these gates, that needs to be at least the resolution, that part needs to be at least the resolution of whatever you're running at. So make that a bit clearer. Supposing we're creating a 720p output where you've got a 720 high frame. If you're going to track all the way down to these gates, that part of the photo needs to be 720 pixels in resolution. Otherwise, as you track down, it's going to get blurrier and blurrier. So it's just something to think about. This was taken with a 550, so it's a 18.9 megapixel still, so there's loads of resolution, so you're not really going to hit that problem. So the easiest way is to go to Filter, Vanishing Point, and here you are. This is your bit where you can teach it where the planes lie. So we've got here Create Plane Tool, so let's do the path first. So we click across here. You don't have to worry too much about being exact because you can edit all these points at any time. So that's your path and as you can see you've got this blue kind of grid which shows you your perspective so I'm just gonna adjust a little bit to make sure that it's completely okay and there we go um, the actual fact to make it easy I might just bring it down okay so there's your path next I want to add some walls these here so you just click on your create plane tool again and as you move your mouse over these little squares, notice the little, little um, square Rubik's Cube type thing pops up by the side of the arrow, by the side of your cursor, sorry. So if you then pull up, you'll see you've now got a wall. And you can then click over the end, click and hold, and you get extended the wall. I'm going to do the same over here. So we select this, and we go add plane, and we drag up, and then we drag back, just to make sure the whole thing is covered. We're now going to do the N1, so select it, add plane, drag up to where it starts to bend backwards on itself, and then we're finally going to add the sky, and boom, that's it. So this is now going to create a set of photos. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this little icon here, settings and commands, and we're going to go export for After Effects. Um, and I'm going to call it Untitled 2. Save that. Say OK. And we'll now jump to After Effects. Now we're going to create a new composition and might as well stick to um, 720. It's a reasonable resolution, so that's fine. And we're going to now import. So you go File, Import, or you can just right click and go Import. Doesn't matter which way and then vanishing point and here it is two you go okay and you'll see it's created a composition automatically here um, so what you need to do is just drag it down and often you'll see it's all a bit skew if um, don't worry about that go into the composition so double click and here's all your uh, parts you've got the pictures down here and what you've got very usefully is a parent. They're all parented to this clip, which means that to turn this round, we don't need to do all them individually, we just need to do the parent. So toggle down the, the transform one and turn it round so it's actually the right way up. So it doesn't look like you're completely drunk. And it's about right. Okay, so far so good. Um, and what you'll notice here is you've also got a 3D camera in it, which is how you basically do this wonderful tracking. So what we're going to do is toggle down the transform and click on position and it's this one here at the end. If you move that backwards and forward you'll see that it's moving. So we're going to start from there, give it 10 seconds odd and I'll just move the camera down. And as you can see even on this rough scroll it's doing a really nice transformation on the uh, on the sides compared to the end. You'll notice that it's doing a different. And the only thing that I've done bad on this is I've not really mapped the end out correctly. So we've got a bit of an odd perspective on that, but 
no matter. Um, one thing that's very nice in After Effects is you can set a depth of field, which is a bit of a cheat. So you can set the depth of field on, um, and then all you have to do is set the point so that that end bit's a little bit blurred, so that this is all nice and sharp and the end's blurred, and that way you can make it look very convincing and a very nice 3D sense. Thank you.